You are listening to the Horse Radio Network, part of the Equine Network family. What a beautiful day for horses in the morning. You are listening to the number one horse podcast in the world. Here is your entertaining look at the horse world and the people in it. I am Glenn the Geek. And I am Allison Renborg coming to you from the Horse Radio Network, booth 207 at Equine Affair in Ohio. And you're listening to Horses in the Morning on the Horse Radio Network for Saturday, April 13th, episode 3408. And this episode is brought to you by Spalding Fly Predators. Good morning, Horse World. It's time for the Equine Affair episode, North America's premier equine expo and equestrian gathering. Well, it's day two. You, we all survived day one. Wait, it's day three. Oh, it is day three. It's day two of us doing shows. It's so. day two yeah. of shows, but it's day three of it's, the show. It's day three. You're starting to feel like day three? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you had some fun yesterday. We're going to talk about that in just a minute because I was very jealous of you yesterday. <laughs> very jealous. Uh, so this is the second of three special episodes. We are very seldom here on a Saturday, so uh, we hope that you enjoy some extra content this weekend. We'll be here tomorrow as well. And we are in booth 207. I had so many, li- I didn't get the chance to tell you this. So I was trying to edit the show yesterday sitting at the booth. Well, I, there were so many listeners stopping by, I, I couldn't get it done. So I went out to the car to finish oh. getting it edited. I, stu- I sat out in the car, got it edited and uploaded, came back in. And I was in the booth till almost 4 o'clock. I didn't get out of the booth with people stopping by and talking, which was terrific. That's it a was, great problem, Yeah, Glenn. it was so fun to meet listeners and, and hang out all day. But I was supposed to be out trying to get interviews for today. And that <laughs> wasn't happening. But I did get it done. So uh, I didn't get out to all the barns I wanted to. Uh, but I'm very excited because the, uh, the American Hackney Association, they're coming over this morning to join us. And I'm going to ask them if all of school Scooter's, uh, you know, his weird traits are normal in Hackney's. I got to find out. I'm betting they're not. I'm, <laughs> I'm betting he got them all from you, and that's why he is the way he is. So one of the guests today is a very selfish uh, reason we're having them on. But we have a bunch of guests lined up for you today, and we're very excited about that, and uh, we'll get to those. But yesterday, you got to do something, and you posted it last night. It was like, oh, man, I'm so jealous. What happened? So the Whispery Pines Percherons are here, and they are owned by Sam and Kelly Redinger. And Sam and Kelly uh, have been at multiple equine affairs over the years. They're an incredible power couple. Uh, They own Whispery Pines Percherons carriage rides and logging. And so they live, breathe, and work with these animals. Like, that is what they do. And so they bring them to Equine Affair to perform in Fantasia and to do Drive-A-Draft. I think you guys have heard me talk about Drive-A-Draft. And I love this couple. I Seriously, I have a crush on Kelly. She's the most amazing woman. She dressed up as Wonder Woman in full armor a few years ago <laughs> for um, Equine Affair. She, this time around, she was wearing full metal body armor as a Valkyrie being pulled in a chariot by one of her Percherons. Oh, cool. A chariot that her husband made himself, I've always by wanted the way. to drive a chariot. Oh. Well, you may have to ask Kelly if you can. So, so that's the backstory. So I'm outside uh, yesterday during Fantasia. And there's beautiful golden light, so I'm trying to take advantage of it with photos and videos. And I hear the clip-clop, and I realize that the Percherons are coming. So it's six gorgeous black Percherons. They're all decked out. The, the harness is jangling, and it's Whispery Pines coming around the corner. In their beer wagon, their big wagon. In their yeah. big wagon. And uh, I get out my camera, and I'm, I'm videoing. And then Kelly waves at me and says, hey, Allison, do you want to come up? And I went, would I? <laughs> And I think I threw my radio over my left shoulder, and I threw my clipboard over my right shoulder, and I ran, walked over there. And uh, so you, when you see the Percherons, you know they're tall. You see the wagon, you know they're tall. It was like climbing a ladder, Glenn. It is. I had to put my foot here, my foot here, pull myself up, whatever. So I get up there. It's I'm very high up there. <laughs> so high. And I'm usually a pretty cautious person. I didn't even think about how do I get down. I was just like, whatever, I am getting up here. And so Sam says, you ready? And I go, yeah. And I was able to video it the whole time. And I cannot tell you, I had the biggest dumb grin on my face. I was speechless. You truly get the, and I've done an eight. I got to sit on the front seat. At a, I cannot at imagine an that. 
And we were doing, they were at moving along outside. Yeah. It was outside on a big track. And the power. It was so, the synchronicity too, and the jingling and the clip clops, and you're just staring at the backs of six gorgeous And the reins pair. and the guy driver's hands. <laughs> I know. I looked over a couple of times at Sam's hands just going, wow. And of course, he's saying the ghee and the hall, which you, if you're like me, you've read about that your whole life. You've never actually heard someone. Well, and the amazing part is they're controlling each pair separately. Yes. I mean, they can get the front pair to do and the middle pair to follow. Yes. And it's all separate. And I loved, one thing I loved and I noticed is every horse's ears were tipped back. They were listening to Sam. So I got to ride outside, and then we went into the big concrete barn here, and so then it was all echoing. All the echoing, yeah. And we got up to the to the stalls, and then Kelly came over and said, "What did you think?" And I went, <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, I'm just making a big dumb like Christmas child morning face, and then I said, "Okay, now how do I get down, Kelly?" <laughs> and so then you have to spin around and come down backward, um, but it was really it made my life. I. Never. I'm just, I'm hooked now. I may have to become a driver. I don't know. I may have to come down to Florida and learn how to drive scooter. Not that that's the same. Yeah, but no, it like, won't be the same <laughs> at all. awesome. The occasional bolting will give you a thrill. Oh, yeah, I like that. Um, it was incredible, you guys. I mean, and then I, before I got down, I turned to Sam um, and I said, Sam, this is your life. You get to do this every day. And he went, yeah. And it's just it's like, a lot of work, though, putting oh, those harnesses on all those horses and just keeping them clean. And oh, just there's a lot them. of surface area on those horses. Yes. And I have said that to Sam and Kelly before. They're, they're always telling me how happy and grateful they are to be here. And I'm like, I'm just happy and grateful you're willing to be here, that you'll put in the work. Because taking care of them at home is a thing. Taking care of six giant horses at Equine Affair is a and thing. And keeping them spit shined and yeah. polished. Yeah. And- yeah, but yeah, it was the best experience of my life, hands down. I mean, I'll put that over my wedding day, guys. I said it. Don't tell Ryan. <laughs> so we were at the World Percheron Congress in the place you do your equine affair in Massachusetts. Mm-hmm. We were at the, in Springfield, West Springfield there. Yeah. And what's that place called? Eastern e- States Expo. Expo. Yeah. That's where they're having it. So it was Wendy and I, and uh, we got to go on the, the eight in hand and do all that. That was fun. But then they had us drive in the celebrity competition. We drove pairs with the big wagons. And we had to drive them an obstacle course. <laughs> Which, I'm telling you, it did not go well. I was against, uh, I was in a dead heat with Dr. Pohl. Wow. From the TV show. Yeah, yeah. Dr. Pohl, yeah. yeah. So he would, but fortunately I had driven before. He had never driven before. So oh my gosh. he was over there wrecking his, his <laughs> wall and stuff. And at least I got through the course. Dr. Wendy won, of course, because she drives force. But... Yeah, it was just the most fun thing. So there were lots of other things happening yesterday. Yes, besides my life-changing event. <laughs> uh, we also had the versatile horse and rider competition yesterday, which is a huge highlight here. Um, for those of you who you know don't remember or need a refresher, uh, we have 25 pre-selected horse and rider pairs. They apply. Uh, we select them based on certain criteria, and then they get to race the clock and tackle an obstacle course. They don't know what the obstacles are until they check in at the event. Um, many of our riders have ridden many times. They spend all year prepping. This is a big thing for them. And so they compete for 5500 in cash, which is nothing to sneeze at. And so it was an incredible competition yesterday. Um, we had tons of great riders. The winner, I, I just wanted to give her a special shout out. She also just had her birthday, I want to say, the day before yesterday. Um, so a late happy birthday, but also a big congratulations to Sydney Hawk and TJ Smoke and Silverado. They were our champions. They smoked the competition with 64 points in a class of, we actually had 24 riders. Uh, and then second place, I got to mention second place, was our very first mule. Oh, wow. And it was a gorgeous mule. Uh, I believe that mule was ridden by Adam Black. Don't quote me on that. Um, and the mule was stunning, um, had the biggest ears you've ever seen, and did a phenomenal job, came in second place. So congratulations to Sydney, uh, to Adam, to all of our great riders. It was a great show. Well, terrific. Yeah. Yay. I know there were so many things going on yesterday. So much. In every uh, arena, and every there were lots of talks. And you know what I was impressed with, too? 
a lot of times you go to these and people are watching the horse stuff and then right. there's always the talks going on by the health professionals and all that mm -hmm. stuff. They were full too. Yes. I mean, there were a lot of people here yesterday. Which is great for a Friday. Yeah. And then today... And we it was not great weather. It was no. rainy and windy. <laughs> but today the weather is gorgeous. Yeah. It's not supposed to rain all day. High in the 60s. You got to come. And Saturday is usually our biggest, happiest day. So. It was our the first time I've been traveling all week, as listeners know. And it was the first day today that I've not been rained on, even in Texas or here. It's just great. It's been raining the entire week. But today is beautiful, and we're looking forward to having some guests here for you Yay. very shortly. But first, let's hear about our friends who are set up like a row over uh, at Spalding uh, Fly Predators. Easy, effective, and eco-friendly fly control starts with Fly Predators. Fly Predators are the organic, natural way to dramatically minimize your fly problem. Learn more about Fly Predators and other Spalding Labs fly control solutions at Spalding. S-P-A-L-D-I-N-G dash labs dot com. Well, our first guest today is down my way. He lives in Ocala, not too far from where we are. And uh, his name is Matt McHugh. And Matt, who do you work with down there? Um, so I work for Coast to Coast Truck and Trailer. We're over there on 40. Um, we primarily build uh, and, and ship nationwide Adam and Four Star Trailer. And they also are a worm flooring dealer in our area. I put in the worm flooring, one of our big sponsors, so I'll give them a plug here. That, that we are. We love the worm flooring. It's a, a great product these days. You're doing something interesting here. What are you doing demonstration-wise here? Yeah, so here at Equine Affair, I am um, giving two presentations. The first one is about um, packing for the long and short haul, and the second one is talking about maneuvering in tight spaces. And then on Sunday, I'm doing a full demonstration with a truck and trailer in the Coliseum. And I for... heard that the tr you have a big-ass trailer here. <laughs> I do. I, this, so so we, we're a little smaller than we were up in Massachusetts, but I do have I a nice... I heard one in Massachusetts was like the, one of the 40-footers. It was, yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I only have, I have like the 30-footer the here this, oh, this oh, time. Oh, no, but we're going to back we're, those up. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, you know, we're going to throw some things out in the, in the ring that I have to clear and... <laughs> and drive around. So we're going we're gonna to see some things that let's hope I don't hit anything. We have listeners all over the world, and yeah. this is a conversation that comes up all the time, is backing up horse trailers. Mm -hmm. And there's always the battle between the, the, uh, between the tag-alongs and the, and the goosenecks, right? Of course. There's the battle about which is easier to back up. Some, my wife loves backing up the tag-alongs. Yep. I love backing up the gooseneck, right? right? And it's just, it seems to be the Republican-Democrat thing <laughs> with horse trailers. <laughs> so which do you prefer to back up? So I'm a, I'm a gooseneck guy um, just because you're able to get, you know, a totally different angle and you can really get Much underneath tighter, and, yeah. and, and really stick that trailer where you need it to go. Um, also, 90% of whatever I've ever pulled is massive, so it needs to be yeah. a gooseneck. What are the mistake people make? What, what are the, what's the biggest mistake they make when they back up? What, whatever trailer. They freak out. <laughs> that's, that is true. <laughs> and I can't the, deny that we all do a little bit. Right, right. And so the biggest thing, and this is, and I, and I tell this to everybody, every day I'm teaching people how to drive their trucks and trailers yeah. um, as I sell them. And it really comes down to taking that deep breath. It's the same thing when you're in the show pen. It's the same thing when you're you know, doing something stressful. Take the deep breath and slow down time for yourself. Now, sometimes we're not in situations that we can really slow down time because we're, you know, in a gas station or we're, you know, in some tight intersection or something. So it really comes down to how do you get comfortable with your trailer, mm -hmm. right? And so really learning the geometry of how your trailer sits behind you and making it that second skin behind your truck. And I think that's one of the things we've learned over the years is, uh, is to slow down. Do right. everything a lot slower than you normally would. Right. Because you are at the horse show. You want to get situated you or wherever. Yeah. Or you're at home after a long, you know, a long time. But that's when, that's when you do bump into things. Right. Yeah. And you're tired. And, yeah. you know, or you're on the backside and you've okay. just loaded. You want to get home. Well, the other and now joke in the RV yeah. world and the horse trailer world is divorces happen. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> when one is pointing and right. the other is driving right my dad always found that swearing a lot helped him when he was backing up our bumper pull my poor musician dad by the way remember guys he was not a horseman but right. he learned how to drive a a cargo van and a bumper pull for me i, love it. I, love well, I it. think one of the keys especially with husband and wives when doing it one is call each other on the phone mm -hmm. 
So you're talking instead of pointing, right? Oh, that's brilliant. Yeah, we do talk to each other on the phone every time we're backing up a horse trailer. Yeah. Yeah. And because then I can be in a place where she doesn't have to see me, right? right? If I have to be behind the trailer to see right. we're clearing both sides. Uh, but the other thing is just be calm. Just right. talk in a calm voice because divorces will happen. Yeah. Yes. And it's really coming down to, you know, understanding understanding what each other's hand signals are. Because it's pretty funny to watch people, you know, somebody might point one direction and the other person, you know, thinks of it as the other way. Yes. And that's a really, you know, that's a big cause of the fight because now all of a sudden the rig is going the opposite direction than what it should be. Well, well there it, is one unmistakable hand gesture that... Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Which we've all used at times. Yes, yes. <laughs> Plus, the other thing when you're talking about this, you're giving directions, is, and this, I don't do very good at this, okay? So it's one of my flaws. And my wife reminds me all the time when we're backing up, is she's like, you have to tell me where you want the back end of the trailer to go. Mm -hmm. Correct. Because that's a whole different thing, right? right. Then, you know, the back end is what guides where you're going. Right. And you, you tend to think about it as a whole, as yeah. opposed to just tell me where the back end needs to go. Right. And there's an there's a, um, abbreviation that's used all the time in commercial hauling, and it's called goal. And goal is get out and look. And so that's really always the biggest thing is make sure that you know, you know, even before you start the backing process as the driver, go take a look at where you have to be and where you have to go. So you understand what's already there so that you're not trying to do the sign language and yell on the phone at each other because now all of a sudden there's a light post that you never saw and they can't explain that where it is because they're or saying tree left branch. is actually right and correct. Tree branches yes. are another. Those air conditioners stick up a good bit on those living quarters. Correct. Yes, yes. they do. Yeah. Yes, they do. It's interesting. I mean, it is kind of a experience we all go through. Right. And, and it's even the two. Sometimes those little two horses, they move those too quick. Bumper poles, they, oh, they, they slide they move around too quick, and, they're a little and slippery you back can't there. back them straight up at all. Right. Yeah. And so in, and in that case, um, in the backing up process, as the driver, a really good thing to always, the two, two things when we're actually in the driving process, when I'm talking to people, is make sure you have a point of reference. So you know where you want the trailer to be and that you have to get your mirror back to that point. So you've chosen a point where the rig has to go behind you and that you reset to that. And in turn with that is that you're always, the goal is to always bring the truck and trailer back to straight. So if you've taken a hard left, let's say, and you're in the backing process, well, you have to come back to the right in order to continue going anywhere. So as much as you go left, you have to go right. And you just have to remember that you make sure you have that balance so then you don't end up in a really tight situation. Yeah. You were also a driver, right? I was. I, I am. So I what's, well. what's the wackiest thing that happened to you while driving horses around this country? You know, it's, it's interesting because I've done it in a handful of different capacities, right? Like I've done a lot of, you know, a lot of farm equipment. Like I have one of my guys right now that's over the road. He's pulling out of Wellington right now driving a customer vehicle up north. And so it's, um, you know, it's a little interesting because you get, it's really different when you have horses versus when you not have horses. And we all have stories on what, what horses have done on a trailer and, you know, how silly they are. I've had one that um, turned around in the stall that it was in and like not a bump, bruise, nothing. And it's like, what, you know, how... In a standing how, stall? In a standing stall. It was a stall and a half. <laughs> rather, you know, a medium-sized horse that turned himself around. And we still, to this day, have no idea how he did it. <laughs> um, he wanted to face backwards, darling. Right. Yeah, he wanted to go backwards. <laughs> so he now ships backwards. Um, you know, and it's it's been... Uh, there's just so many of them where it's, uh, you know... Traffic in Virginia, which is always the 95 stretch oh. through Virginia is always one of the worst. Or the bumps in South Carolina. Yeah, or the bumps in South Carolina. Well, they're paving right now, so we're all really oh, excited. Yay. Yeah, the Carolinas are getting paved. I really so. thought my wheels were coming off the trailer in South Carolina. Yeah, you got to hang on tight through there. You know, and the sometimes bridges? You're, uh -huh, <laughs> you're exactly. airborne, and the horses are too. Exactly. Um, you know, we had a couple years ago, Virginia had that freak snowstorm, and I, we had horses coming down south. And, you know, when you're, on, you're stuck in a snowstorm, in a traffic jam, you're there, you know, and it takes you from the New England area down to Ocala, and you're now sitting at 34 hours on the trip, and you have horses on board, like, now you're getting the fire department involved to get water to the truck. So, 
you know, it's, it's things like that that occur that you have to be ready for. What's wow. the biggest mistake people make when they're hauling their horses? Ooh, that's, a, that's an interesting one. Um, the biggest mistake that people make, uh, adequate water supply. Mm. Um, and I'm not saying I, I'm one that it really depends on the horse if we're going to provide water for the whole trip. But it's really how much water are you able to give them. So if you were going to give them a general rule of thumb, they don't have water in, in the trailer. Most people don't, right? right. Uh, and they're doing an eight-hour trip. Stop every two hours? No. You can do four or five. Four five? Yeah. Okay. So, you know, and, and trucks today with, <laughs> again, it goes back to your horse, right. the, the weather, all of these things, right? right. Um, I'm a big one. Always talk to your vet when, you know, yeah. because each horse is different. You have a different you know, schedule for what they do and that sort of thing. But your, um, you know, your average truck today with a medium sized trailer, not heavy, you're going to get somewhere between three and a half to four and a half hours out of a fuel tank. That's really a good rule of thumb on checking on your horses, checking legs, checking respiration rates and making sure that they drink, especially, you know, it's harder when you're, we have the bigger rigs where, you know, we're trying to give water to, anywhere from 6 to 15 on board. But you're really having, you know, if you can, you're going to bring water source from home because that's what they're familiar with. Um, but that's usually the point that that we're giving water and, you know, making sure that they... One of the biggest... On. I, I would have said, if I was giving that answer, and we just did a whole trailer segment on safety. Yep. And people driving too fast with their horse trailers. Mm-hmm. They're doing 75 yep. with the horse trailer. Their tires aren't rated for that right. in most cases. They have no idea their tires aren't rated for that. Right. Um, and they, you know, they end up with the tires getting too hot and they blow it out. And, right. you know, that, that I would have, I would have said that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and if we're talking about the actual rig and the yeah. operation, yeah. yes, I'm, I'm a hundred percent with you on yeah. that. We see, you know, and, and. We see it all the time in our service bays is is blowouts, and it's mm. mostly due to if the tires are rated correctly and being used correctly, and dry rot. You know, especially in Florida, we have you know oh, yeah. the sunshine. Yeah, you got so what four year, five years out of your correct. Tires. So so, and that's the rule of thumb. So every five years, even if you still have decent tread width, tread depth, it's time to replace your tires. Yeah. Yeah. And that's just the the standard rule of thumb. Yeah, and you can tell. I mean, you know they're dead, and you're just putting it off. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. And, you know, and I understand the expense that comes with that, but, you know, it all comes down to safety and time on the road. And yeah. if, you know, it's, it's really dangerous to have horses on the side of the road. Yep. Definitely. And, and if you do, you need U.S. Rider, which is one of our sister companies that can help you get your horses to your destination after you do break down. There you go. There you go. It's, <laughs> there I got uh, the plug in there. I, I love it. Matt, I, love I appreciate it. it. Thanks no so much. What's the Thanks, company man. again? Uh, I work for Coast to Coast. Coast to Coast out of Ocala. It's right off the highway. Yes, sir. Yep. And we can follow you on Instagram at, at your driver, Matt, that right? That you can. All right. Well, that was so much fun talking to Matt. I love that. It was really fun. I, we he need to great. get him on. He used to be a limousine driver, and I want to hear about the stories of what happened in the back of a limousine. That, i got to hear those stories. That would be a very fun post show. <laughs> yes, yeah. yes. That's yeah. a post show. But right now, we have Madison with us, and she is a pony clubber out of Ohio here. Hi, Madison. Hi, how are you? Good. It's so good to have you here. Are you, now, what discipline are you? I do eventing. Yeah? All right. And what level are you upon? What is it levels now? What's it called? Certification. Certifications. Oh. Okay. I used to say ratings, and then I'm getting in trouble <laughs> now for saying that. So I'm a C2HB member. HB member. The HB is national. I, and what's that mean? So the C2, I'm a C2 traditional, so I went into the three phases in the venting at the three-foot level, and then I do what we call HM, which is horse management, and that's all about your knowledge, and it's a lot of basic veterinary and just how to be a true horsewoman. And then HB is strictly knowledge, so I did two days' worth of testing. You just basically got questions all day long about really in-depth um, just horsemanship and a lot of veterinary knowledge and nutrition all sort, and wrapping and all sorts of stuff. That sounds fun. I like tests. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard. Yeah, it is hard. You guys stress. get deep. <laughs> we get very deep. But that's the great thing about Pony Club because then you learn so much and know how to take care of your horse. Yes. The one day we got those questions and asked each other on the show, and I don't think we got any. I think we, were, we didn't get any of them on the show. 
So you're an inventor, and but you also have worked for some fun people yes, as a I working have. student, and one of them is here this weekend, and that's <laughs> Philip Dutton. Yes. What was that like? It was so incredible. I started by emailing some three-star inventors. Not many answers. I was like, okay, go bigger. So I emailed. <laughs> I love that. So I go emailed. Bigger. I love your attitude. <laughs> so I emailed one of the best. I'm. Ex- I was not qualified. <laughs> um, I just kind of listed some names I had to work for, and I was absolutely shocked sitting in English when I get an email back from Philip Dutton. Um, so then I met him. I Did you freak out? The job. I was like, oh, my goodness. Like, I'm going to – they're interested in me. Like, I, this might be a thing. And then we met at Land Rover, and I talked to him and his amazing wife, Evie Dutton, and we talked there. And then just a couple months later in July, I – Came in with my horse about 500 miles away from home. It was absolutely incredible having my horse there and just being so emerged. And I mean, you live there, like you live on um, the farm and you ride there. And then just casually every week, we'd go over to Windora. I would see Boyd Martin, say hello, shake hands. Um, and riding all those horses and riding his horses, I rode some baby off the tracks up to four star horses. Wow. Lots of conditioning. I did a lot of conditioning. It was incredible. The people I met. You learned more in your time there than you did your whole life. I learned, I learned a lot. My horse, he was kind of struggling. So I got to learn a lot just about how the businesses ran. And I got to learn a lot about how to develop a horse properly because it wasn't really his passion, but it was mine. And I'm thankful to have a horse that I could have taken. That's very cool. That's very cool. So what else have you done in Pony Club, too? I've done a lot. So we have camps, which those are spectacular. That's how I met Mark and Mimi Combs and got to go ride for, uh, work for them for a brief time. You meet a ton of people. Um, we do rallies. Which Did you is do games, the too? Show. I've never been into games. Oh, really? Yeah. My horses are a little spooky, so I never <laughs> really got into that. I first started Pony Club. I had hanging off of them wasn't a lot, it wasn't something you intentionally did. No, but no. I did do it all the time. I brought in a little pony when I first started, and I just fell off at everything. Aww. That was pretty much everyone's like, "Ah, oh, she lands on her feet now," and I pretty much did. I just fall off and land on my feet. That's how you learn, though. Oh yeah. So we do camps, we do rallies, and then too, when we're traveling to shows, I'm down in Kentucky. It's like, oh my gosh, I know this person. These are my friends. I forgot my boots. Someone has an extra pair. Um, so you're with Pony Well, Club tell us lot. about your horse. Yeah, so my horse, she is so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> She's a seven-year-old off-the-track thoroughbred. I got her a couple months ago. Her, oh, wow. Her name's Warning Bell. She won about 30 grand on the track. Um, her name's Bell. She is a huge, huge mare. Um, I didn't want a mare at all, actually. I, when I was down at Phillips, it kind of cemented it for me. I didn't want a mare. I was about two weeks in. I was going to load my horse on a trailer as a straight load, and a mare kicked me. I flew off the trailer. We thought that my pelvis was broken. Oh. Before I knew it, Philip Dutton's out. Olivia's sitting there with me. The whole barn's out. So, yeah, we went. I was kind of like, wow, I'm 500 miles away from home. What am I going to do now? But she was big mare. I actually ended up trying her when I was looking for horses. So <laughs> she was pretty good at competition. But... Uh, I went and tried her, and I fell in love with her. I didn't want another off the track again, but I went and tried Belle, and I knew she was my horse. Well, that's so cool. And how how have you done with her? So when I bought her, we knew that she's going to have to get surgery to remove two bone chips. So, again, Pony Club was awesome because I got my horse bone chip to remove. And how do you wrap? How do you do all that type of stuff? So we did a ton of wrapping. We're just now kind of coming back into work and getting ready for our first show season. But she's been super awesome and a pleasure to work with. Yay! Good for you. I love that. I love that story, too. Um, warning. You said warning bell, right? Yeah. So that didn't give you any qualms, Yeah, right? I, I, that, that just stuck out to me, too, actually. <laughs> That's what my vet said when we were, like, <laughs> we were like a couple grand into emergency visits. She's like, you didn't get anything from warning bell? I was like, I guess not. <laughs> we always Aww. say the name is truly ends up being how the horse is. Uh, so, but you've already had your warning now. I, yeah. You're over that. Yeah, but she's never thrown me off. I've never hit my head off the ground with her, so <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> well, congratulations on your new pony. Thank you. How big? 
She's 16 2, and she is every inch of it. Yeah, and big boned. Yep, she's yeah. big boned. She's really nicely built, super upright. So she's a huge 16 2. Sounds like an adventure to me. Oh, yeah. Yeah. She's so powerful and very athletic. <laughs> well, good, good luck with her. Thank you. We hope you do well. Yeah. And thanks for joining us today. Thank you so much. And what's the website for the Pony Club? PonyClub.org. As horse owners, we spend a lot of time on the road. Let U.S. Rider help keep you covered. Our equestrian motor plan offers fast, reliable, nationwide service from our highly trained roadside assistance team. 24-7 coverage for both you and your horse. Membership includes horse trailer servicing, towing, flat tire repair, even on dual wheels, battery assistance, and lockout service on any vehicle in your plan. We also have your equine companions covered with referrals for emergency vet services, barrier referrals, and emergency stabling assistance. Get peace of mind on the road for you and your horse. Join U.S. Rider today. Well, she was a joy. I she actually was. loved talking to her. She was great. She's going to make it in life. She's my new hero. Yeah. She's... yeah. If my daughter can be just a little bit like her. I'll I started with three stars, but they didn't answer, so I went bigger. <laughs> I love that. I'm going to start doing that. Email bigger, Allison. Just <laughs> yes. do, it, do it bigger. We always want to, once we... If we don't get a response to something we do, we tend to want to go smaller. And she has the right attitude. She's like, I'm just going to go bigger. <laughs> There's no ceiling for her. No. I don't think she's ever seen and one. And she's smart as a whip. I mean, that, I that, love it. that doesn't hurt. I love it. Well, you know what? There's a, there's a product. I like to highlight a product every show, as you know. And yep. yesterday we highlighted a gifty product. And today I want to highlight a product because since I met my wife, there's been a horsey product in our shower. And that's mane and tail. And she's used mane and tail since I met her. And that's 36 years ago. It's just been always mane and tail. So I stopped by over at Straight Arrow, and I, I talked to Ashen yesterday. And you guys, what, what a lot of people may not realize is, you'd be about an inch from the mic there, you, you guys have a huge human line. Yes. Yeah. Yes. We always had the horse products <laughs> and use those, which a lot of horse people do. But you have a huge human line. We do. And, you know, it was because of the fact that we made this first for horses and we made it all about horses. So one of the first things that we did when we developed it was checking in to see what is the pH of a horse's skin. And what we found was that was much more sensitive than humans. So this product has essentially the pH of baby shampoo. So when people, because as we all know, as horse owners... If we're going to feed our horse a treat or use a cream or a lotion or a medication, many times we'll try it on our own skin. You know, we're, we're making sure that our babies are going to be okay. And they started seeing results on their horses. They started using it themselves. And then it just really burst out into the human side. And I think it's that gentleness that took us there, too. And it, was, it allowed it to be a crossover product. And you have a ton of products, but I did ask you yesterday, what's yeah. a new product you have coming out? Yes. Tell us about this new product. So Hoofmaker actually has been around as long as Main and Tail Conditioner, which was our first product. Wow. Over 50 years. But it kind of needed a new leash, leash on life. So Hoofmaker is extremely effective in helping hooves grow in stronger, and it really works on human nails too. And that was kind of discovered when they were putting it on the hoof. They noticed their own nails were doing great and were, weren't cracking and breaking and splitting. And so it's a great healing lotion as well. But we wanted to kind of bring it into the new era and make sure it was more of a clean beauty type of product. Because this really soaks into the skin. It really soaks into the hoof. So we wanted to be mindful of that. So it's paraben-free. It's scent-free. And we've added some really great things on top of what was already there. So it's called Hoofmaker uh, Hand and Nail Therapy. Yeah. So this is in the human line. Well... No? It's in the hoof line. It's in the hoof line. Okay. Hoof maker. Gotcha. But well, this is the smallest container, so it's really more for the human side and this size. But it's, it's got the biotin. Formula? Nope. It's a brand new formula. Ah. Biotin, collagen, coconut oil. The castor oil was already there. The coconut oil was already there. But we really added some things like the sodium hyaluronate really allows for new hoof growth. And in your hands new cell growth for skin and nails for people. Mm. So this is truly that horse-to-human hybrid item that's important for both horses and humans. The other thing I always liked about your products is you don't tend to go stinky, like trying to over-perfume it. Or, oh, yeah. Uh, that's one of the things I've always liked about your products. Is some you. of them try and do that, True. even with the horsey products, and it's like, whew. 
you know? Yeah, we're trying to cover up for something. But, you know, yeah. horses are in barns. And the, that's the smell some of us love, some of us hate, but we're not going to perfume the pig, you know? So in this one, we took out the scent because some people do like to put this on their face as well as their hands. And we would just want to make sure that everything that could cause any kind of sensitive would be removed from the product. And that's what makes it different now. And it's going to still have all the great properties the old version had just in a new, uh, more updated formula that's really going to go to work even harder. And when is uh, Hand and Nail Therapy coming out? It's out right now. You can get it all your tax shops. You can get it online on our site as well as our partners. And this is nice, the one I'm holding in my hand right now, because it is, it is smaller. It's a three ounce, so it's easier to carry with you in your luggage and all of that exactly. stuff. Exactly. Yeah. So we made it that you can travel with it, yeah. pop it in your back pocket if you need to. And it really works. It soaks in. It doesn't leave any sticky residue. So you can put it on your hands, touch the leather, do anything you need to do. We have a lot of mountain climbers who use this, weightlifters, anybody who doesn't want sticky hands, but they want their hands to heal. And that's what made Hoofmaker so like, famous worldwide with people and with horses. And it's the thing we're keeping with it. It's still, you can snap your fingers as soon as you use it. So I think that makes it different. Well, and it's great for moms too, because I mean, you don't want your horse to go like, hey, you smell bad. And you don't want your, I don't want to, like I have a two and a half year old. If I put anything really smelly yeah. on, she's just like, mom, don't touch me, you know? Agreed. So it must be interesting for you at these shows now, because you probably have people coming up and saying, we've been using your products for generations. Yes. My grandmother used it. My mother used it. But, you know, yes. I use it. And it's not just I've used this on my horses since my great grandmother. We're also getting people in the textured hair community that come in and say, my great grandmother uses this, my grandmother, my mother, me, now my children on themselves. So it's cross it's gone across the board, both in the horse world and in the human side for generations. And that means a lot to us because we're still a family owned company. Um, everybody has a vested interest at Straight Arrow and we feel like it's ours. So when we see families using our product, they're our family. And that means a lot to us. What's the website? The website is maintaintailequine.com. And for all the personal side, it's maintaintail.com. Well, I have to tell you that I'm so excited about our next guest because this is personal. This is, this is all personal. There's a reason I invited them over, and you're going to know why in a second. We have Erica here, and she's with the American Hackney Horse Society. Hi, Erica. Hi. How are you guys doing? Good. And, of course, my pony scooter's a Hackney Pony. He's registered and everything. Mm -hmm. um, and I, ha I had to have you here. One, to find we do, we do highlights of uh, breeds all the time on the show. And, uh, you know, is the hackney pony the same as the hackney horse personality-wise, or are they completely different? But I'm, everyone's different. You know, all horses are a little bit unique. I think the ponies, because they're so little, they got to compensate a little bit. So I think their personalities maybe are a little more out there. They have a little more spunk to them. Attitude. A little more attitude, yeah, Ponytude. making up for their size. Um, but overall, I mean, their qualities that we breed for, their willingness to please, they're really easy to train. So overall, similar, but individually, I think the ponies have a little more... A little more oomph to them. Are there more hackney ponies registered or more hackney horses registered? Ponies, yeah. yeah. Ponies are really popular. Um, they're so versatile, and because they're little, you can do a lot with them. You can drive them. Kids can ride them. They're a great kids' uh, pony, so uh, I think they have a little more popularity, so we have a little more of those registered. So mine's about 12.3. Uh, is that an average pony size for... Average, yeah. That's right in the middle there. Um, they don't get much taller than that. Not too much smaller than that. Um, Kathleen, the range, do you know what the, the average range is at all? Under? Under 54? Yeah. Okay. And the horses, what do they tend to run? Uh, so for uh, Hackney horses, um, and similar for r, &R Barn, we have American Saddlebreds. Um, their top is usually 17 hands. No... Uh, smaller than 15. So 16 is like the happy medium. We like 16. Hands. Even for the hackney horses. Mm -hmm. Wow. They can be a little bit bigger, um, but that's generally where we like to keep them. Yeah. And are, is it half and half riding, driving with, with the breeds? For the ponies, it's mostly driving. Right. Because um, they're so small. Yeah. Because yeah. they're so little. Um, but I mean, like kids can ride them. We see that a lot in our industry, but mostly driving. Same with the hackney horses. It's a lot of driving enthusiasts that uh, get interested in that breed. Well, I got mine as a rescue, and we figure that at, he was supposed to be, I think, a show horse, but he has no action at all. I mean, he is. I had a hackney before that was a roadster pony, and that horse had the most action I've ever seen. Yeah. It was terrifying to drive sometimes on trail rides because 
that horse was out there. My wife wouldn't even go in the cart with me. Yeah. I thought it was like driving a Ferrari, and I thought that was the best thing ever. This one's like driving an old station wagon that barely runs. <laughs> so, you know, it, it is personal and individual. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because we breed for those qualities. You want that action, especially in the show horse world, but, you know, some, sometimes they'll let you know, hey, that's not yeah. really what I'm interested <laughs> no, in. No, that's too much work is what <laughs> yeah. it is. Yeah. <laughs> not really what I want to do. So what I wanted to do was ask you a couple of the traits, and the listeners know about Scooter, okay? Mm-hmm. That we, we name all our horses after Muppets, so that's that's why oh, Scooter. I love that. Okay? Yeah, I love that. So, and Scooter fits him so much. Yeah. And ponies, too, act like you can get away with some, some more out there names. Like you can he be is like a creative. puppy dog. Yeah. He is a puppy dog. He's more like a dog than he is a horse. Mm-hmm. He'll follow us around. He's always in our pockets. He just hangs out. It sounds and, like he's spoiled. Well, that's true, too. But are they, do they tend to be that one person hang out, I'm going to be your buddy and just be in your pocket. And I'll be at the fence and he'll just stand there, you mm-hmm. know, with his head over my shoulder for, for, for 30 minutes. You know, he just hangs out. Yeah. We have a couple like that in the barn. Um, we have a pony, his name's Jameson and he's so calm, so easy. Same thing. Like he'll just follow you around like a puppy dog and is just so happy to do his job. And then we have a couple other ones that are a little more like, all right, I'm here to work and I don't really want to be no petting for me. I'm all business. So, yeah. yeah, it's it's pretty across the board depending on how they are. But we have a couple that are like that, that are real sweet and just want to follow you around and just pet me, give me treats all day long. <laughs> well, and they're cute as a dickens. So even when they're bad, you go, oh, he's really cute. Well, and that's why I think they know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he knows. <laughs> they, they know they're too cute and they'll get away with it. <laughs> he tends to, we have a thoroughbred also, a big mm-hmm. thoroughbred, and he runs the I don't know if all hackney ponies run the field, but he runs, by him runs the field. Yeah. Yeah. He tells that thoroughbred what to do and how to behave. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ours will too. When they go out, like, uh, like I said, Jameson, he's really sweet, um, but he'll go out there. He'll, he'll let everybody know he runs around that field and he'll make sure everybody knows that and they're, they're in charge. Quick. So yes. when the thoroughbred <laughs> kicks, he's just always just out of range of getting kicked. <laughs> yeah. One of these days he's going to get kicked, yeah. but he hasn't yet. Not yet. No. <laughs> <laughs> What's what as far as trainability? Are, mm-hmm. You know, w- when you compare them to other breeds, you've had other breeds too. What do you? Are they more trainable? Do you, are they? I just find them willing and eager to learn. Yeah, we, and so we have saddlebreds and Morgan horses in the barn as well. And they have very similar qualities. We like that high action, yeah, especially the Morgans. Yeah, yeah for the yeah. show ring, and but they also have that trainable personality. They're so easy to please, and they want to go to work. They want to, you know, connect with their human counterparts. So it makes training them very easy. You know, and, and all horses are different. Everybody has kind of their quirks and what their problems are. Um, but overall, I mean, they're born. They they want to please. They want to work. So it makes training them a lot easier. Um, you're not trying to. You're usually convince them to do something they don't want to do. They want to come in the barn. They want to be challenged. So um, it makes it a lot more rewarding when you're working with them and they want to step up and do the next thing. You know, Morgans are a fascinating breed. What a lot of people don't realize, there were more Morgans here in the late 1800s, early 1900s than anything. They mm-hmm. were they were used for everything from driving the family to church, to working, to even in the fields. And yeah. They're and so they still versatile. are, still are um, especially in a lot of the Amish communities, they're still like a really popular breed with them for pulling the buggies and things like that. Um, and for a lot of breeds, even the saddlebreds, they're the basis for a lot of how we got those breeds. Uh, Morgans and thoroughbreds are a lot of the breeds that we started with to create other breeds. So that's how we got saddlebreds is a mixture of those two as well. So they're the basis for a lot of things because they were so popular back in the day. Allison, when I was down at their booth, uh, they had the cutest older hackney pony. What's that hackney pony's name? Her name's name? Willow. Oh, Willow Aww. was the cutest, sweetest little hackney pony. Yeah. Well, how old? She's 27. Oh, she has another 15 years to go yet. Aww. Yeah, and not a lick of gray hair on her at <laughs> no, all. No, she had no sway, sway back. back or nothing. No, yeah, she no. looks like she's in, she looks like she's 12. I hope Scooter like looks it. that good in another 10 years. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I really do. Well, and how old did you say? He's 16. 16. Yeah, yeah, so he's still got probably 20 more years in him too. My last pony that I had lived to 45. Yeah. So yeah. we were driving that pony till that pony, she was 35. Mm-hmm. And wow. she was going, she just, if you didn't, if we were going out, she saw another cart going out, she'd freak out. <laughs> like, why am I not out there Aww. having we fun? We have a couple of lesson horses in the barn the same way we've tried to retire. I'm trying to cut back and they get mad. They're like, no, I want to like, hey, I see everybody else going to work. <laughs> you know, where's my saddle too? Do you find some of them that have been show horses end up being show sour, ring sour? Because... You know, Scooter loves adventures. He loves going out in the woods. Uh, we had a face-to-face uh, meeting with a panther one day about five feet away. Oh, my gosh. Scooter puffed up. 
uh, and to his, I'm going to attack anything that comes at me because I'm a tough hackney pony. Yeah. <laughs> and the panther took off, thank God. Um, but and it he was to tell the tale. Yes. yes. <laughs> and, but Scooter wasn't backing down. Mm-mm. There was no backing down. I'm gonna, I'm gonna handle this situation. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I mean, that's the breed. They're so confident they want to perform. And I feel like that's true with a lot of our horses that have been in the show ring and then transition out of it. If anything, I think they get jealous. Then when we leave the farm to go to a show and they get left behind because they're retired now, they I think they get jealous. They wow. love that energy. I think they get overlooked as really good in retirement after show trail ponies. Yeah. They're good trail driving ponies mm-hmm. because they do like adventure. They like yeah. different things and they like to see new things. And he loves the woods. Yeah. I mean, he just loves it. Mm-hmm. I mean, the... Yeah, I watch out for panthers in the yeah, woods. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the woods, I feel like, to me, it's similar to the show ring. There's stuff to like, The trees are moving. It's similar to, like, the crowd cheering. There's always kind of something to capture their attention to keep their ears looking. So it's that same spirit of there's always kind of something to pay yeah, attention to. All horses tend to get bored in the ring, too. Yeah, you know, sure. they, they're doing the same thing all the time. They like... I'm one of those... And we have a dressage show, too. Mm-hmm. And, we, you know, on my host of the dressage show, believe a lot of dressage riders will not do trails at all with their horses or show horses. She believes in that. So yeah. she hacks them all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I think it's amazing to do that. And it shows the versatility of the breed, too, to be able to take yeah. them off the trails. Because a lot of them do so well. Um, I had a saddle bred years ago. Oh, it's probably been like five years now since he passed. But... Um, would hated the show ring. He had really bad anxiety. He'd been abused before he was a rescue. So he didn't like the show ring. It was too overwhelming, but loved the trails. Loved doing that. And so I think all of them, they have sort of their own niche of what they like to do. And um, they're just so versatile, which is the great thing about them. Where can people find you guys? Uh, so on Facebook, we have a website. Um, our booth is in where are we were in the Voinovich building today, tomorrow. Um, what numbers are we? 160... 157 to 165, I think those are the numbers. Um, there's so many booths around here, it's hard to keep track. But we'll be here today and tomorrow. Um, and then you can find us on Facebook or on um, online. Um, Kathleen, we're with Lookaway Farm in Medina, Ohio. So if anybody's ever interested, you want to come out for lessons, come see a pony, come hug a hackney, give us a call. We'd love to have somebody out and um, let them shower our ponies with affection. <laughs> Sounds good. It's American Hackney Horse Society. Yes. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Thanks for having us. This was great. Well, what a fun round of guests today. And thank you for putting up with me having that on the talk, no, hackney I, talk. I loved it. <laughs> and I, that reminds me, I never did get to listen to your Panther story. Like, I listened to the lead up, but then I never got to listen to the Panther story. And now I need to go back and listen to it. Yeah, we need to put that out again. We need to re- revisit that one again. I just love the picture of Scooter. Like, I almost want someone to draw a cartoon of this where Glenn's eyes are really big yeah. and Scooter's like, <laughs> don't up. worry, Dad, I got, I got this. this. And then the cat's like, oh. Crap, <laughs> yeah, what is that thing? <laughs> yeah, somebody somebody get on that. It'll be a new t-shirt. Well, thank you all for joining us today. We really appreciate it. We're going to have another round of interviews for you tomorrow. And today the highlights are at the show. Oh, you had to ask me that. Today is Saturday. It's our really great day. I know the Olympics are this afternoon. Oh, the Great the Equestrian Fitness Challenge, Challenge sponsored by Boot Barn. That I'll is be, at, be uh, at Fantasia tonight. Wonderful. So it's I'll a great to watch show. That. I got to watch some of it last night. You're going to love, so the Percherons are going to be in it, like we talked about at the top of the show. And then there's a teeny tiny wagon pulled by, I think, six or eight teeny tiny black furry ponies. I saw the picture of them side by side. They were so cute. Yes. Oh, it's great. And uh, our announcer was describing to me, I think, Thursday night, there's a moment in the show where they go head to head. And he described the little lead pony looked up at the big black Percheron and went, I'm going to go and try to, <laughs> oh, no. Duck out. <laughs> try to dive like you're going to eat me. Um, so that's adorable. Uh, so, yeah, we got Fantasia's last night tonight. We got the Great Equestrian Fitness Challenge. Oh, the Best Booth Award uh, at noon Eastern. I'll be tallying those votes. So if you have not voted, you can vote from home, guys. Um, And they also can register for prizes. Can they still do that? Oh, yes. You can register in the raffle really until Monday. So go online to our website and enter the raffle. Go onto our Facebook and vote in the Best Booth Award contest. Uh, there's all thing, kinds of things you could do if you're here. Shopping, obviously. I haven't gotten there's to shop There's been a at lot all. of that going on. There's a lot of bags going by. I need to shop for my little girl, um, definitely. I'll have to steal my husband and say, let's go shopping for a minute. Um, great Equestrian Fitness. I think we did drive a draft this morning, so if you missed it, too bad. Uh, and then, of course, all kinds of clinics, educational seminars, you name it. We got it. A bunch of our sponsors are here, too. I wanted to mention Stateline Tech is here. They're all set up. They've been a sponsor for ours for 12 years. 
I saw a lot of state line bags going by yesterday. And then if you're on the western side, Rods is here, and they're like the biggest western store I've ever seen. Yes, yeah. they are. They're huge. So check them out as well. Thank you, Allison, for helping put all this together. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Glenn. It's the best part of my day. No post show today. I got to get this edited, and uh, I'm going to visit the Percherons today. Yes. So I got to go do that. Uh, but we'll uh, we'll talk to you all tomorrow. Mm-hmm.